This is the male reproductive system flowchart with an outline of sperm production and movement. So we start with the sperm. Sperm, which really are made out of three parts, a head, a little midsection that contains all the mitochondria for the energy, and a flagella for swimming. The head contains all the DNA necessary to create a new human being, and pretty much not a whole lot else. The middle section contains all of the mitochondria, and all a sperm really does and needs to do is swim to where it's going and drop off the nucleic acids and the DNA needed to make a new human being. Sperm are made in the testes, which are found hanging outside the body in the scrotum. They are outside the body because they need to be just a couple of degrees cooler to be produced and to mature than the 98.6 that the body is at. So the scrotum hangs a little bit outside, it's a couple of degrees cooler. Sperm are made in the testes from Sertoli cells. These Sertoli cells are involved in the meiosis process that makes the little tiny sperm cells. All of that happens in the testes, which are inside the scrotum. Next, the sperm need to mature. They mature in the epididymis. The epididymis is a series of small tubes right next to the testes, so still outside the body, hanging in the scrotum. The sperm spend time maturing there, so they mature, and then they head into the ductus deferens, also known as the vas deferens. There's been some renaming of some of these pieces going on, so if you learned vas deferens, it is now ductus, and that is mostly so that it corresponds to the duct tubes, or the oviducts, that associate with the uterus, since they are essentially the same pieces and accomplish the same jobs. While well, it's traveling through the ductus deferens, which it will do all the way until it gets to the area where the penis, and it becomes the ejaculatory duct, It picks up various things it needs along the way, different pieces of the seminal fluid, which then, combined with the sperm, will make semen. The prostate gland adds an alkaline fluid. So we have said before how the vagina is a acidic place, and so an alkaline fluid is basic, and that will take care of the acidity, which would have otherwise killed the sperm cells. So the vagina pretty much does everything it can do to keep sperm out, and sperm do everything they can to get their way in. The seminal vesicles, they add fructose, which is a sugar. This sugar gives the sperm the energy that they need so that they can travel and so that they can swim the long distance that they're going to have to go. And as I said, once you add the prostate fluid and the seminal vesicle fructose, you now have semen and you head toward the ejac duct. The ejaculatory duct is the way out through the penis. Now, of course, the only way for this to work, because the penis also includes the urethra. When the penis is flaccid or it's soft, the urinary system is active and it acts as a urethra. But when it becomes erect, then sperm can exit through what we call the ejaculatory duct. There's one more gland at this point, the bulbourethral gland. Urethral. 
and it adds mucus so that the sperm is something slippery to follow along with and to help them get, again, through the vagina and up into the uterus, where these teeny tiny sperm have a fairly long way to travel. So, the semen, which contains the sperm and all of the fluid portions of the uh, seminal fluid, it go, exits out the erect penis and you have ejaculation. And that's how the sperm get where they are going to go. And the whole rest of it is reliant upon the woman and the vagina.